So I work on epigenetics to try to basically understand non-coding variants. So like um, one of the challenges really when we see a variant, most of the variants that we detect that are like mutations and in different individuals uh, are actually found in the regulatory regions of the genome, so outside of gene. And that's, that's again, where uh, regulation works, where epigenetic works. And to understand which variants might be important or not, we need to understand how epigenetic works in these regulatory regions. Uh, so that's really how I think, I guess, in my simple way of thinking about epigenetics is interpretation of non-coding variants uh, and how they might be associated with disease. My lab really works at trying to understand a non-coding genome uh, and regulation in, in the non-coding genome. And the approach that we use is really to uh, actually, so we, we do these maps not just in human cells, but in also in other species and other uh, primate cells and, and mouse cells. And we're comparing uh, what we observe in terms of the regulation across these different species to try to understand important regulatory elements versus uh, potentially less important, right? So as we detect variants uh, outside of, of coding sequences, it remains challenging to interpret these variants. And so we're using these maps across different species to identify conserved elements, conserved regulatory elements versus potentially novel elements to, to try to prioritize which regions of the genome might be more important than others. So that's one aspect. The other aspect is really actually, so there's a big effort as part of uh, the, the SHIRT consortium, for instance, which is to profile different cell types and different tissues. but. So that's, that's obviously very important, understanding what is the basal state of, uh, of you know, different types of blood cells and different types of, uh, of various cell types. But beyond that, it's also interesting to know how variable they are between individuals. So another way of trying to understand and prioritize variants and understand which variants are important is really to profile, in some cases, the same cell type, but across lots and lots of different individuals to look at variability and, and really link genetics with epigenetics and say, well, the people that have an A here as opposed to, to a T, uh, really that leads to a change in, in their chromatin state at that particular location. And that, again, going back to the question of, um, you know, how do we actually annotate variants in the genome that helps us understand these variants better. So, so my lab really does that in terms of sort of profiling across individuals and also across species as a way to get to, to understand the, the non-coding regulatory code. So, I mean, we do various assay. One of the ones that is a taxic, for instance, really just profiling open chromatin. Uh, so again, uh, we do that, for instance, one, one project that we have is looking uh, upon infection, you know, in, in, in various blood cell type, again, across different uh, population, Caucasian individuals, and also African-American individuals to look at their response to infection and see which regions of the, of the genome actually opens up in, uh, upon infection using the ATAC-seq uh, assay, but also a number of other uh, methylation assay and, and histone profiling assay. And then we look at these differences in terms of which, which re first, which regions are different in these different individuals and across these different population. And then we can go more, more deeply into trying to look at genetic differences that might actually explain these epigenetic differences that we observe in terms of. And so all of that then allows us to learn in terms of sort of the, the general rules of, oh, okay, well, you know, a, a, a variant in this type of of a context, you know, appears to have a, a, an impact on the epigenome, and then you know, going back and, and and linking that to trying to say, well, maybe that explains why the response to infection is slightly different in this population versus that population. It's probably not a very original answer, but everybody's moving towards single cell profiling, right? So I think that's, uh, but <clears throat> but again, in the context of trying to understand. Um, regulation. We, we've been working with these average profiles of mixed cell population. And that, again, taking my, my hat of a data analyst, is really a, a major confounding factor because we don't really know 
the mixture of different cell population when we profile these these complex tissues. And so that, it, you know, at some level we can sometimes deconvolute that and still perform the analysis, but the ability that we now have to do the same types of analysis, but at single cell level, um, and then, you know, as a first step, we can really uh, uh, describe the different cell population in our sample and then look at the regulatory elements, but with this very, you know, clear understanding of the, of the mixture that we're basically looking at. So I think, uh, Again, maybe not the, the most, oh, it's, you know, original answer, but I think uh, that's, that's definitely one of the very important direction is really looking at the same thing, but with this understanding of what's happening within single cells. You know, in terms of closer to my lab and maybe a bit more specific to what we've been doing, um, I meant, so, so there's a lot of work that's been doing, looking at this comparison, trying to understand gene regulation in, in model organism and mouse and so on and, and rat. And one of the things that we've realized is how, you know, at the level of genes, things are highly conserved and so that, that works well. But at the level of regulation, there's a lot of changes that are much uh, more, more new in terms of ev evolution. So the idea that we're actually moving to profiling uh, really, you know, human cells and, and in some cases, prime, you know, non-human primate cells to really understand sort of the more recent innovation and in regulation, I think, is another area that's very exciting and, and you know, the kinds of work that, that we're interested in specifically. Mm -hmm.